ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dying Time is here. That's right, we're talking Jason X on Kill by Kill. Well, greetings and salutations, Internet. It's your old pal, Patrick Hamilton, coming to you once again from the Crystal Lake Research Facility. And this is the Kill by Kill podcast, where we are dedicated to celebrating the least discussed component of any horror film, the characters. We're going to unpack all the gory details of Jason X in the hopes that a rando soldier's end is just the beginning of the jokes that we can make about them. And as always, there's only one person I trust in this world that when I get super annoying and creepy, she'll throw a blanket over my head. The one and the only Gina Radcliffe. Uh, I, I am back from my uh, journey being being trapped in the, the wilds of southern New Jersey, which which made it so I was not available for the last episode. Well, we don't know. We, we might end up putting this after all of the uh, prom night two. <laughs> so you'll then be returning nobody sooner will have, than you think. N- nobody will have any idea what I'm talking about. Then. <laughs> like, where did she get where? <laughs> I just just picture me like like Robin Williams when he when he first appears as an adult in Jumanji with with long hair and beard and just keep that image in your mind it'll make sense eventually. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're glad to have you back, even though you might have been back three or four times in the interim. We don't really know how this is going to lay out. Maybe I'm just going to drop this on on Friday the thirteenth. I don't we're know. Just, we're we're just messing around with the audience. We're you know creating that that David Lynchian sense of our needs, like like. I, did I miss some episodes? Maybe do I need to go back? That, was there something that I that, that that she said that I that I missed? Just like sort of you know sense of unease. Yeah, this is uh, the J.J. Abrams mystery box pa- uh, cast. Oh, I mm-hmm. fucked that whole joke up. God damn it! This is the J.J. Abrams mystery box cast. It really wasn't worth going back, frankly. Now that I think about it, wasn't that great of a joke? Oh man. This is a weird one, y'all. But, oh, Gina, I don't want to alarm you, but we are not alone. That's right. Our special guest ranks as the premier expert in all things VC Andrews, at least that I know. Our very own flower in the attic, the one and the only Megan Sunday. How are you doing, Megan? I am doing great. But thank you for taking time out of your schedule to waste it talking about Jason X. Now, I know that you love things that are creepy. And gothic. But Mm -hmm. how about Friday the 13th? What was your first introduction to the Friday the 13th franchise? Uh, It was this. Jason X itself. (laughs) I'm I'm so sorry. Uh, I was was not allowed to watch Friday the 13th movies growing up, uh, Mm -hmm. very specifically. I think because these were probably the ones that were always on TV. So it was these in Nightmare on Elm Street. We were told those are not allowed. Okay. And I was I was a stickler for rules, so I would not watch them. And then by the time I decided I was ready to, to break free and do my own thing, this was what was at the Blockbuster. <laughs> and uh, we rented it in college, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've had several guests who their first Friday the 13th is their favorite. So does Jason X rank as your favorite in the entire franchise? No. Okay. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it 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 holds a it, it holds a place in my heart because it it's just so silly. It is. Well, we have to set the table for all of this. Let's let's cast our minds back for especially for the youngins in our our, our audience, and I, I'm sure there's at least three or four who've weathered our cavalcade of arcane references to remain as part of our dedicated cadre of kill by killers. Uh, the year is 2000, actually. This was released in 2002 because it sat on a shelf for two whole years as New Line debated, should we release this into theaters? <laughs> um, <laughs> they eventually uh, relented. And as Brian Collins uh, told us uh, just a few episodes when he was on Uh, ever so graciously for Jason Goes to Hell, the trailer to this film is terrible. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it is nothing but computer edit push in after computer computer edit push out. It's just a lot of whoosh pans 
up until the point drowning pools let the bodies hit the floor takes over. Oh yeah, and... this 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 uh, <laughs> this whole movie is so very very two thousand. Yeah, and it's it's very much like two thousand horror movie. Like I just thought of every one of the very kind of dreary colored horror movies, like the like Thirteen Ghosts and. Uh, the house on haunted hill and how they all had this sort of like super cool alt rock soundtrack and and it just it was as soon i mean you could see it right in the opening credits because oh boy they discovered cgi <laughs> oh it's, my god it's absolutely true the people who made these titles sure did watch spawn and x-men i thought it was the wrong movie for a second i i thought it was a latter day hellraiser i was like <laughs> wait why is there so much goo what am i watching it's a lot of goo for any film. It's just dark brown synapse firing after dark brown synapse. As we, I guess what this these opening credits are telling us is that inside Jason's brain, there is fire. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, 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 when it opened up, I, I kept thinking, remember um, on South Park when it would occasionally just cut to a scene in hell? Yeah. Yeah. I, I. <laughs> I like as soon as it opened, I expected somebody in the background to let out like a Howie Long scream because I, I was like, because I didn't. I've only seen this once. I, I didn't remember if it kind of picked up where Jason goes to hell left off, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, okay, he's in hell, and I and I guess the somehow or another he's going to emerge from hell and then get frozen and launched into space. But no, this is this is you know somehow stupider than than my idea, <laughs> am- amazingly, and it's just supposed to be like what the inside of his his brain looks like so his brain is an internal combustion engine of some sort like is it coal fired how does his <laughs> brain work where there's fire inside of it I, and the other it's thing the cre- is- it's the creative fire that he he needs to come up with all these ways he's t- taking people out that's right listen he's an artist and he has a muse and that uses death or his and eternal his mother, flame and his mother and his mother, who does not make an appearance in this, unfortunately. We get to go both inside and out of his brain and then through his blood system. Um, yeah, and there's a real weird close-up of what I guess is supposed to be his eye. Yes. But he looks perfectly normal in this close-up. Mm-hmm. I, I I was like, Wait, is that his eye? Because, <laughs> like... Like the skin around it is perfectly clear. It's you know he does not look like it does not look like the eyes of someone who is who is you know died and risen many times over the past forty years. But then they show like the the spooky again you know, the creepy doctor like in again House on Haunted Hill, which for some reason this movie reminded me a lot of. I don't know why, but it just kind of closes in you know menacingly as if to suggest that the doctors in this are way creepier than Jason, which is an interesting you know, tactic to take, as if you know the. the I guess now they're just saying they're going to kind of put the audience. Well, gee, I don't know who I'm going to root for here. Now, you, <laughs> you right. don't you don't root for the guy who's killed you know over a hundred people at this point. But then later they they do another you know super cool close up of his eye, and it's you know same old you know lumpy rotting you know, burnt meatloaf Jason Voorhees again. <laughs> they can't quite decide what he looks like. I, I think we're going to get into the details of why this is so hazy a little bit later on. But I I want to dig into this doctor thing because. What this credit sequence is attempting to deliver to us is the idea that this is like a Frankenstein thing. Like, oh, he's being experimented on and that's not fair. I mean, (laughs) what the fuck do I care if he's getting experimented on constantly? Like, why? Why would I? Why would anyone try to say Jason Voorhees is the person that you you want to root for now? As well, I think opposed... it was. I think again they they leaned real hard in that making them like the Freddy Krueger movies, yes. where it was sort of like, well, you, you maybe shouldn't root with Freddy Krueger for Freddy Krueger, but he's just so funny and and charming and engaging, <laughs> and he always has a wise crack. But Jason again, and of course you know this, Gina, but. Why didn't New Line? They're entirely different monsters. Freddy is, and we're going to have to adjust the way we come at these films once we hit Nightmare, but you can project anything you want onto Jason Voorhees because he isn't fucking telling you what his point of view is ever. He doesn't talk up until he's occupying a dreamy sheriff's body, and then he's all yippity yappity you. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's not a single wisecrack out of out of Jason Voorhees in mm-hmm. in, in ten goddamn movies. Not <laughs> yeah, one. Not one. There's no you know see you later or I'll kill you last or whatever <laughs> thing you want to pull from the last time you watched Commando, which for me would have been <laughs> I. <laughs> this is revealing two days ago. <laughs> Well, why wouldn't you? That's right. Listen, if you have Commando available to you to watch, my suggestion, watch it. It's a good <laughs> can time. I, can I just mm-hmm. say for my, my favorite line in the entire movie is when he's looking at a copy of like Teen Beat or something, and he makes commentary about Boy George. That's just, <laughs> that's just my favorite moment. He just tries so hard to, to make a dad joke, and, and it's just as stiff and unconvincing as anything Arnold Schwarzenegger has ever said and I'm pretty sure he had children by that point but not of the age where he had to interact with them with the possibility that they had a blossoming sexuality or agency of their own certainly (laughs) but regardless I mean at one point I thought wouldn't it be funny if we did a kill by kill of Commando because it really is a reverse slasher movie Oh, please, don't tease me like that. We, we, have, the, we have to do it now. But the end, we would be talking about those kills for five years. He kills about 30 dozen people. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he just starts throwing saw blades at people <laughs> and hitting them and they fly back as if they were shot out of a cannon <laughs> now, oh now you put the idea in my head now uh, i'm gonna now i'm gonna message your day today patrick can we do it today <laughs> <laughs> all right well maybe we put that in our back pocket you know we, we we've got a quite a road to hoe here so back to jason x unfortunately hey uh i'd like to welcome you all to crystal lake research facility which we are uh, shown in awesome computer font. <laughs> Complete with the little dee 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 sound effect. <laughs> like we're in the middle of fucking war games all of a sudden. <laughs> as, as with everything else in Crystal Lake ever, it is wildly understaffed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and damp. Damp mm-hmm. as and, hell. And dark. You can't see anything. Everything's wet. And the only constant is Jason, I suppose. He is housed in the most alfresco open air <laughs> facility. I've yeah, ever he's seen he's like set up like an art installation. <laughs> <laughs> Please exit through the gift shop after visiting yeah. Jason Voorhees. It's like some like I expect to see like yo yo Marina Abramovich like just like just like hanging kind of up there with them. <laughs> Only intellectual, only true intellectuals will get that reference. <laughs> what are you? What is inside of you? Well, he never, he never blinks. They just look. They oh, just they're look very at each proud. Other. They're very proud of the fact that he never blinks. It came up in my Amazon X-ray trivia that you never see Jason blink. I was just going to pretend I just knew that, and then you blew my whole scene right there. <laughs> Come on. We can cut it out. Say it again. They'll cut this shit out. It's not like my rejoinder is so fucking fascinating. Just like Hannibal Lecter, except not nearly as smart or interesting. Well, that's what they're kind of going for here. They're like, hey, remember how everyone loved Silence of the Lambs? I think you're right. Now you mentioned it. Hannibal Lecter was all alone in that cell. What if Jason was... Hannibal Lecter. And looking, yeah, what if, you know, a, a someone who's murdered over 100 people is just left alone to be watched over by, you know, a guard that does not look old enough to grow a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. Uh, we have a lone guard who does not seem prepared. He doesn't even appear to be armed. No. No. He's armed with a blanket. He's standing behind what looks to be some sort of blast shield from Star Wars or a. <laughs> The hollowed out Dalek that used to be in residence at this particular facility. I don't understand it at all. He's just lit from underneath and totally creeped out by his assignment of watching over uh, Jason Voorhees. Why would he need to be in the room? I don't there know. There are no cameras? They couldn't no. afford cameras. <laughs> There's no Why lighting for cameras. Why would you just surround him with explosive devices or whatever the fuck? Like, seal him in something. Why do they think that just chains are what's going to keep him in place? This seems like a, a bad yeah, idea. I, I, 
minimum, and again, much like you know, how in uh, Silence of the Lambs they had a, a very elaborate system for getting things to and from him, you would think they would at least have some sort of like uh, barrier in front of him. Mm-hmm. But but no, this mm-hmm. this this sixteen year old pizza delivery guy just comes <laughs> right up to him, gets close enough to toss a blanket over him. Yeah, there's got to be more effective ways of dealing. Why do you have a blanket? Dealing... <laughs> Why a blanket indeed? There has to be more effective ways of dealing with Jason Voorhees than treating him like the clown puppet in Poltergeist. You just, <laughs> ah, you frightened me. Now you're behind a blanket. Everything's lock... fine, everybody. They lock Jason Statham up in Fast and the Furious more <laughs> than they do Jason Voorhees. <laughs> <laughs> This is very true. Maybe the government learned from this particular <laughs> mistake. Who's to say? We have to. We should probably talk for a moment about how Jason looks a little different now. He has a lot of hair. He, he has. Yeah. He, he has like some sort of crazy old man Brillo pad hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, I'm glad I'm not the only one who noticed. That. And and he's got his hockey mask is now sort of molded to his face. Yeah, do they do that? Is is that what the doctor's doing? I well, mean, I, is it like sort of like a you know man the iron mask thing where he can't take it off because it's it's like sculpted to his face yeah. now? And are those chains like in him? I couldn't tell what was happening in that opening sequence. The face overgrowing the mask element is a bit of a carryover from Jason Goes to Hell. In that film, we got the explanation that Jason can constantly grow back. Right? So now, Jason is Wolverine. (laughs) Which makes sense, because in part 8, he was Nightcrawler, because he could bamf everywhere. And in part (laughs) 7, he fought Marvel Girl. So my question to both of you is, is this, is Jason Voorhees in the MCU? Yeah, Yeah, this is, is, what is it? It's uh, Alkali Lake. That's where (laughs) he is right now. (laughs) That's right. It's all coming together. Literally Weapon X. So, yeah, you're right. Oh, my God. I think you cracked mm-hmm. the code. So now that we have figured this whole thing out, uh, yeah, our <laughs> our Weasley teenager who his father has told him, you're going to go to work this summer. I don't care where. And he ended up at the <laughs> Crystal Lake <laughs> Research Facility <laughs> is going to deal with this Aww. Jason Voorhees problem by putting a blanket over his head, <laughs> which I'm sure is standard operating procedure <laughs> for something. I can't imagine it's this. And then cut to David Cronenberg. (laughs) Because because why not? For some reason. They were in Canada. Yeah, I think Canada has a lot to do with it. He might have just been hanging out. Can we just spend the rest of the episode talking about David Cronenberg? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) For real, yeah. (laughs) We'd have a lot more to talk about, certainly. Uh, It's not the first time he's, you know, added his significantly unsettling presence to a film. But it works because he is intensely untrustworthy as far as what you can project on him when he is on screen. He, <laughs> he just he's seems basically, like in this, he's basically like like Burke's dad from from Aliens, just like, mm. oh no, we're just going to study it. Everything will be fine. Everything's <laughs> under control. Wink. <laughs> He's very overconfident about his abilities to study Jason Voorhees, and he's basically playing the evil scientist here. Uh, We're also introduced to Rowan, uh, who will be our protagonist for this movie, at least. Uh, She will re-enter eventually. But here, uh, she seems to be in charge of this joint, or... I don't know. She's not listed as Dr. Rowan, which is a little odd because... Is, is that her first name? Yeah. Uh, first, last, middle? Yeah. Who knows? Well, it, you, know, just, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's her and, and you, know, you know, pizza guy. That's it. That that appears to be the only <laughs> staff at this research facility mm-hmm. that is that is carrying this murderer of hundreds of people. Oh, there's one other. The doctor scientist who's doing experiments on Jason, and then we get that one RoboCop... Uh, view of his face as oh right 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 around. okay so so far this movie has referenced uh we're getting a lot of aliens vibes uh we're definitely uh getting x-men uh we got robocop silence this, of the lambs silence of the mm-hmm. lambs poltergeist this movie is referencing even harder than jason goes to hell i do wonder if that will continue and they're all so much better movies <laughs> <laughs> 
Just the, I the, don't... The, the audacity to, to reference movies that are so much superior to the movie, to your own movie. To have David Cronenberg walk in. Yes, like... it's me. And then, and then, like, and then stay on last on screen less than two minutes. <laughs> I mean, at Just... least in a movie like Nightbreed, he's in it a fair amount. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's playing a legit character. In Nightbreed, because he's, he's, he's so around. Great. He's so fucking great in that movie. Oh, oh my mm-hmm. God, I love him so much in that movie. Cronenberg <laughs> <laughs> uh, knows how to hit a line uh, in a very weird way. Let me tell you what my favorite is that he utters right here. I don't want him frozen, Rowan. I want him soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yes. a little bit yeah. of, a little bit of ew. <laughs> kind of okay. what in that line. <laughs> I want him my skin soft. Is quite... My skin is crawling, and I don't know why. <laughs> I enjoy no... that she just kind of lets that go. I feel like he probably <laughs> talks like that a lot. Yeah. She's like, uh-huh, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're the guy who likes him soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> His character's name is Dr. Wimmer, but we're just going to call him David Cronenberg. Cause... <laughs> He's just basically playing David Cronenberg. He's playing David they Cronenberg. They really do... I, 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 totally, yeah. I totally expect David Cronenberg and talking to him that he would just, just let out something vaguely creepy. Just, <laughs> you know, you don't know why it's creepy. It's just kind of creepy because of the way he says it because he's kind of smiling and he's got that sort of really soft psychiatrist voice. And it's and you think later, well, that, that was kind of weird that he said that, but you don't really think about it at the time. But then you like, you're like, you're sleeping and then like your eyes like open up and it's got that, you know, that broken glass sound like in a cartoon. You just, you're just <laughs> thinking about what he said for the rest of the night. You can't sleep. <laughs> Yeah, the guy who made guns into soft hands, typewriters into sexual objects, and videotapes into vaginas. Um, I don't think I want David Cronenberg making anything soft. (laughs) Nothing good will come of it. And I love all those movies. I'm not saying I don't love those movies. I do. But they're creepy for a reason because there's something in his head that knows how to creep you the fuck out. So, Mr. Cronenberg... Uh, wishes to Doctor Cronenberg. Doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he's been knighted by the Queen at this point. Uh, why wouldn't you? Um, Doctor Cronenberg would like to transfer Jason to New York State, uh, which didn't work out the last time Jason was in New York State. <laughs> Did not go well for anyone. But he wants to study once again this ability to regenerate lost and damaged tissue. So. Again, he's fucking Wolverine now. The skeletal version of his reanimated corpse that we saw in the in the later Paramount films, he's now regrown this flesh to the point where in this film, he's got enough hair that you're like, is Mario under that mask? <laughs> like if he popped it off, would he go, it's me? I was thinking like that or like Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your rubber bands, ladies. <laughs> Someone's about to stick him to her face. <laughs> what was the point of that? Was did that just was that because what tactical advantage do you have to pinning rubber bands to your face? I don't because it um, looked cool. Does <laughs> it? <laughs> Not really. No. 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 <laughs> uh, rubber bands are terrible. No, rubber bands are terrible. Pinning things to your face is terrible. I if you want to creep people out, there's plenty of things you could do to your face to do it. But just like, hey, you see this rubber band pinned to my face? That's going to be you. <laughs> what? Is that a threat? Are you coming on to me? What the fuck is happening right now? Can I just say that I, I am really, really proud to say that I am pretty certain this is the only podcast that managed to reference Marina Abramovich and Captain Lou Albano in the same episode. <laughs> That that just really puts us just over the top. You know, <laughs> we Mac- give you the highs, we give you the lows. McElroy's where we're coming for you. No, <laughs> nobody re- education podcast now. Nobody references like we do. Lightning <laughs> fucking quick. <laughs> oh boy, um, Doctor Cronenberg is very certain that. His security detail can handle just about anything. Rowan does throw it out there. If you move this guy, a lot of innocent people are going to be killed. And Cronenberg's like, I don't care. (laughs) W.E. Sure. (laughs) That that sounds like a YP, not an MP. (laughs) 
which wouldn't is that be not more true. Of a, wouldn't, wouldn't that be more of an EP, everybody's yeah. problem? <laughs> it is an EP. <laughs> Very much so. We're going to find out why. As Cronenberg uh, and a slew of soldiers walk into Jason's open air containment area. Why the fuck is there so much water in this room? Like, did someone leave a tub running? What it's the like, fuck is it, going on? It's like, on? did they build it under Crystal Lake? They must have. I think <laughs> and, that's and, what it is. And, and forgot to seal it? Is there a Rihanna video shooting in here later today? <laughs> Why is it so wet? <laughs> Someone get a mop and try to do something about this. This cannot. The early it, it, aughts were wet. They just yeah, were. Yeah, I, I feel like that was just kind of a look. You know, kind mm. of mur- kind of murky and shadowy. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just feel it was kind of the, that aesthetic. They all walk in there <laughs> and discover... They, they see that uh, Jason, uh, underneath all these chains... Uh, and they they there's a blanket on top of them, and Cronenberg says, "Get that fucking blanket off of them." And what? <laughs> Our teen soldier, soldier number one, is dead and chained up. So now, folks, Jason is David Copperfield. Yeah. How? What? That... <sighs> and and he has also managed to procure an enormous knife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I, I, I guess he they just kept, you know, the evidence room right near where they kept him locked up because you know you would you would do that. That that's a smart thing to do. It was well, just an open display light. case. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you see Jason and then you move to the display case. It's right there. You just reach in. That's the thing, Gina. Crystal Lake is full of loose machetes. <laughs> the whole town just has loose machetes sitting God damn, we love this loose machete here. I could have fallen <laughs> over this and cut my toes off. Oh, no, no, just put that down. We'll pick one up the, when we get to the next place. This place is rife with machetes. The, the, the tetanus shot industry in, in that town is, is it's just a gold mine. That's right. It's a boom industry. So as he's pulled off this magic trick and become <sighs> David Copperfield, it is time to play our second favorite game here on Kill by Kill, Copperfield or Peanuts. This is where <laughs> you decide, just like Jamie Lee Curtis and Terror Train, whether or not you are more sexually attracted to David Copperfield or Peanuts. <laughs> the food, not the comic strip. So, Megan, as our guest here, I turn to you oh, first. Boy. David Copperfield or Peanuts. David Copperfield. Okay. He's got a private <laughs> island, but you might not want to go there alone. <laughs> He's got all that billowing wind and all those open <laughs> shirts. He's spent a lot of money in billowing wind. Very good investments in that industry. Uh, Gina, what say you? Uh, I, I am not a fan of intense smoldering stairs. Uh, I, mm. I am a fan of honey roasted flavors. So mm. I, I will have to go with peanuts. Okay, and you're not allergic to peanuts, though. I'm not allergic to peanuts. I may possibly oh. be allergic to David Copperfield. <laughs> well, how would you know unless you exposed yourself for? A I, I, I feel of time? like he may wear an intense, sort of unpleasant cologne. You know, you know the <laughs> kind that you know he really lays it on. You can actually you like you taste it. You ever, you ever <laughs> been around someone who's had that much cologne on? Yeah, and you're just like, well, oh man. He's under a lot of hot lights every night. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's doing uh, eight shows a week. He's making those uh, the seven forty sevens disappear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now you see the Statue time. of Liberty. Now you don't. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you're gonna Jesus get. Christ, why did I watch that shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, as this is Canada, I would, of course, in, in this film at least, I would choose peanuts because up there they have potato chip covered peanuts. That are the best fucking thing you've ever tasted in your life. I, I've never heard yeah. of such a thing. Oh yeah. my god. It is the best thing. It's this crispy shell of potato chips covering a peanut. And it just combines these two great things you did not did not know went great together. They certainly go better together than me and David Copperfield. I'll tell you that right now. That, that, that seems a little, you know, yo dog, uh, you like salt, so I put a little salt in your salt. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I listen. If some industrious Canadian kill by kill listener wants to send Gina and I some potato chip covered peanuts, we're not going to say no. 
I'll try. We're also not going to tell you how to get it to us. But (laughs) I will. (laughs) Tune in next week when Gina tells you how to get her potato chip covered peanuts. (laughs) If anyone wants to send me a wind machine. (laughs) That's right. I'll, I'll take it. Anyone have an industrial fan, they can get to make it. Summer's coming, and she ain't going to fan herself. That's for damn sure. You got you to gotta get those, like, flowing blouses and skirts. Like, uh, you know, got to get a Kate Bush or Stevie Nicks thing, because why else, why, uh, why else wouldn't you have just a wind machine? That's right. Basically, yeah, and that's my dream, so <laughs> I'm sticking with this. This is good. I have a plan now. <laughs> People find their way here on the Kill by Kill podcast, and now you have. But before you take off on your journey of discovery, we have to get back to the action. Now, teen soldier number one, we're going to call him soldier number one because he's listed in the credits as soldier number one. Write this down. We don't know how soldier number one died necessarily. He's just bloody and with the appearance and pallor of death chained up in that whole contraption. So he's gone. See, you wouldn't want to be a soldier number one. Soldier number two, once Jason appears right behind him, he takes a rifle to the back of the head. So it looks like it splinters or it's wet. I I could not tell. It's so dark in this movie. It sounds right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, you know, I have have the wiki here. Hold on one Uh second. Uh, uh, It says head bashed in, hung with a chain. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then the next one is bludgeoned with a machine gun. So, so yes, basically what you okay. said. So I guessed correctly. Uh, soldier number two bludgeoned with a machine gun. This then sends the soldiers into full-on aliens, marines mode as they just start shooting wildly. And number three uh, gets caught in the crossfire and shot by number four. <laughs> yeah, they're in a wide open room, but just wildly shooting around (laughs) they do not seem like the sort of tactical team i want to take into battle necessarily well no Um, one can see no and jason pulls uh, the old thor get help routine and throws soldier three at soldier four (laughs) and he dies by i don't know getting a soldier thrown at him i guess (laughs) i thought that would have been a good spot for a, a wilhelm scream Mm, yeah that, that's one thing this series lacks is wilhelm screams it does so that go, there goes soldier number four soldier number five fires off about a dozen rounds into jason who responds by lassoing him with the chain oh fuck now he's ghost rider what is going on <laughs> in this movie is nothing but marvel reference after marvel reference soldier six Take some sort of stick or pipe to the face. Uh, And then Jason finally drops Soldier 5 who to the ground because he's been choked by that chain. He just whams him to the ground like he's a calf running away in a rodeo. Uh, This is where we start to make Mr. Science Theater 3000 Junior Rodeo reference jokes. Yes, that's one of my favorite ones. (laughs) And the crowd goes wild. Yay. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, yes. (laughs) Uh, Jim Henson's last picture show, babies. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the soldiers. Um, and David Cronenberg takes a run for it. But not so fast. Jason javelins him to death with a magic <laughs> pipe that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I watched this sequence three times in preparation for this. I don't know how any of this stuff happens. I really mm-hmm. don't. Yeah, it, I don't know at what no. point he has the the knife that he managed to jam through a steel door to stab Rowan. I mean, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but it's like, when did he have that knife? Well, I assume that's the same loose machete that he comes <laughs> up with when he's suddenly out in the hallway and mm-hmm. Rowan discovers the Sergeant Marcus has been sent through a steel door and dies by steel door disease. <laughs> I don't know, he's a technist? <laughs> I like how he gets final words, like we, we really know and care about him. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm okay. Sorry. okay. okay. <laughs> Who are you? Which one are you? I had so much to give, <laughs> but I couldn't. Like, what is this? A fucking monologue? Just die already. <laughs> Do you have codes? Do you have magic codes that get me out of this? <laughs> They really do start everything like we're supposed to know who everyone is. Yes. Yeah, they really miss it, don't they? Yeah. They don't, they're like, "Eh, this is completely in media arrest. Like, you Mm -hmm. understand what's happening here. 
I mean, I guess I can pick it. I mean, it's lovely that they trust me so much that they think you're. I'm going to pick up on what this is because it's so referential to other things. I mean, okay, but they're also. It's also half-assing it all the way. Like, why not give these guys graphic deaths if you can barely see anything? It's like he dies by a kind of head injury. I mean, sure he was wearing a helmet, but you know. Head injury? <laughs> Why not have him take a head off or something or punch his way through a heart? Mm-hmm. Like, he knows how to do this. At least when Cronenberg goes out, like, he goes out. Well, they get a little better, but, you know, this is just a little, you know, this feels very video gamey, which, again, I'm, I'm going to keep harping, you know, throughout this entire movie on how much this is a very 2000 movie. Mm-hmm. Oh it, yeah. yeah! Everything looks very video gamey. Everyone here has played Doom, and they would yes. like you to know it. Yes, that's 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 what I'm thinking of exactly. And then it's it's the future, but it still looks like 2000. <laughs> Everyone's wearing like super. Well, I don't want to skip ahead, but well, I, I'll let's say, just say, I say there's, I, there's I fashion. Say this every time, every time Jason X comes up, this is the best costumed Friday the Thirteenth. I think of all of them because people are wearing very nice knits. There's so many knits. They're wearing knits. They're also not wearing underwear. It combines the two things yeah. I like about Friday the 13th. <laughs> lack of underwear and knits. And he puts, it, it weaves them together like a blanket of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've broken Gina with my knit work. This could be the new toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, toilet's gonna haunt us for the rest of our life. When we say that, I wonder if people actually go back and check out that episode. It's still one of our lowest downloaded episodes, and I we Aww. reference it all the time. I wonder if people are like, well, I'm not gonna listen to that. The best joke they keep talking about every goddamn week. Well, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of that and you being unable to speak for about five minutes. <laughs> Let's make another comparison to this and Friday the 13th Part 2. That particular uh, film is very good at one thing, underwearless people. Oh, I'm sorry. Two (laughs) things. Cat and mouse chases. There's a couple cat and mouse chases that really work in this film. Flash forward to Jason X. Uh, We have Rowan. She is the last person alive that we know of in this facility. Jason Voorhees is right behind her. There's nothing but one light lit hallways and steam in front of her. It's the perfect place to have two and a half solid minutes of great cat and mouse action. And what do we get? What amounts to the a video from the scorpions? It's just people walking and steam. <laughs> Yeah, it looks a little looks a little bit like the uh, like the video for for when when Kiss went unmasked for the first time, and it's just <laughs> and it's just them walking down the street, and then there's some sexy ladies coming down the other street, and they never actually make contact with each other. It's journey separate ways, but at night and indoors, <laughs> just people doing keyboard hands at you aggressively. <laughs> But even that is more exciting. Like, I don't know what's going to happen in Journey's Separate Ways video. I This has zero tension to it. It's just people creeping around for two and a half minutes. I wish someone would sing. Oh, man. <laughs> Imagine if this was musical. Um, yeah, no one really uh, goes into song. No one's surprised by a cat in a closet. I mean, we get nothing. It's just... Hallway after hallway of pipes. Oh, like. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a combination yeah. research facility and steam factory. <laughs> <laughs> there is one surprise that's contained in here, and this is going to be ancient history for anyone listening to this. But right before we recorded it, I put the picture up on Twitter. Jason comes into a shot, and he is wearing some sort of leather coverlet. It's <laughs> it's like a ratty bomber jacket or a, a leather poncho. Was he was he yeah. always dressed like he was in the middle of the Road Warrior, and everyone forgot to tell us? Or well, what is going is on he, with and, this and thing? Why isn't he, and why is he just wearing like you know scrubs or something, or or like right. a like a prison uniform? Why is he so wearing his mask? I think that's what they put him in. I think it's like some kind of mask. 
<laughs> yeah, why doesn't he start with his mask off and then put the mask on later? I think they dress him in the weird coverlet. I think that's part of like the chaining sequence. I still don't know what was happening. <laughs> chain, chain, chain. Leather poncho that a backup guitarist for Bon Jovi might wear. Perfect. I was going to say it's a little little bondagey. I, I don't know that that kind of that kind of you know, fits with the uh, kind of creepy Doctor Wimmer. Yeah, he it wants does. it soft. <laughs> Now, I did on, think this was a Hellraiser. It looks like a Hellraiser. On Twitter, Gina responded that it might be, if you looked closely, you could see that it was a members-only jacket. God, but, if uh, only. <laughs> but friend of the pod, uh, Kip Reed, responded on Twitter that it was actually a dismembers-only jacket. Oh! oh. <laughs> Nicely but, um, done, um, Kip. That's right. <laughs> we have a winner. Uh, <laughs> So that was that was an extra good Twitter joke. And so you should follow us on Twitter, folks, at Kill by Kill Pod. And, and now um, now we have to tell him that we mentioned him, so he'll listen. That's right. <laughs> we'll get one more. That's how we get him. We lure him in. Please listen to us and maybe we'll say your name. <laughs> Speaking of luring people in, that's what Rowan does to Jason in this cryogenics lab. Once he's into position, she shotguns him into place, firing a bunch of uh, shots into his midsection and then pushing a bunch of CO2 tanks into place. And then she kind of jawses him into a cryo chamber and closes the door. Don't we all feel safer now? Yeah, we're not really quite sure why. I mean, she is, uh, apparently has intended all along to freeze him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Poor that, kid. That, that's what she told David Cronenberg, that she was preparing the cryo chamber to freeze him. And that's when he says, I don't want him cold. I want him soft. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't, I guess, do we ever find out why she wanted to freeze him? He's too dangerous? I mean, they have a bunch of samples. Why keep him around where he's dangerous when you, you can yank out all these organs and all this junk out of him? You don't need him, like, the possibility of him walking around and killing everyone, because all it takes is one blanket, and he's like, ah, that's what I needed to get out of this. <laughs> he's like MacGyver with a blanket. Also, if they need all these samples, there was... They were not keeping him in sanitary conditions. Like, we're just hanging him in the middle of a parking garage, wrapped in leather. Right. Uh, that's fine, right? That's, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Random Highlanders or a Yakuza uh, gang could come in there with katanas at any second, and who knows what kind of damage they could uh, re... Uh, <laughs> who knows? Ah, oh, fuck it. I hate that joke already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, uh, is he a Highlander? It, he could be a Highlander. Uh, no one's, I mean, only one person has taken his head completely off. And even that didn't stop him because mm, that's true. That's when the, the Tinkerbell heartworm thing happened. We we discovered that he's full of Tinkerbells. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't really take those Tinkerbells out with a syringe. And so, oh, wouldn't that be gr- Wouldn't that be great if they like injected them and like they like, they, they you know, the syringe filled with fluid and it was all like glittery? Yes. Well, that would be continuity. I, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> and they look under they look under the microscope and there's a little angry pixie. Fairy lives don't matter today. <laughs> God, that's a fucking horrible movie. Thanks, Netflix. <laughs> don't make movies. You're not good at making movies. You can acquire movies, but don't make them. You're, it's not what you're good at. It's fine. Hot you know, takes. That's right. That's what people come here for. So uh, Rowan manages to seal him in, in the cryo tube, and we think everything's fine, but no wait. Uh, just when you think she's got him, she decides to look at him face to face, which is not a good <laughs> idea. And he stabs her with a machete through the cryo tube, which means this is a get bunked. It Nine is a get bunked. Nine minutes in, bunked. someone gets bunked. It, it is. I mean, it's a one person, but it's a one person bunk. It's a yeah. it's a solo bunk, which it's a solo you know, bunking. It's, it's all right. You know, yeah. we we all you know need to self bunk every now and then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, you don't always need someone else's help for a bunking. You can just be right there, and it's a one on one bunking insertion. Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure I'm a fan Phrase, of how that ended. Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> So when he does this, this somehow explodes the cryo chamber and the Frizo rays come out. And listen, I don't know how this Walt Disney shit works, but 
for whatever reason, the computer voice comes on and says, oh, my God, we're sealing the cryo chamber. Uh, this isn't good. And everything freezes out of that one hole in the tube, including Rowan. Oh, no. Well, this is what happens when you run a, a research facility with two people on staff. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Because that's if there was true. one more person... <laughs> she could have hit some sort of panic button, and and maybe they could have they could have stopped it. But no, it was, it was the night mm-hmm. shift. Everybody ran right out of five o'clock. You know, it's Miller time. <laughs> oh my god, I wish it was Miller time. Hold on, I'm gonna drink my beer. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So that brings us uh, once again to everyone's first favorite game on Kill by Kill. And that's choose your own death venture, and that is where we decide. Amongst our small group, uh, if we were to de- if we were to die in one of the ways presented in this film, and we had to, w- which one would we choose, a- and why? And so, up for bid this week, we have killed and then placed under a blanket, and then we have smashed in the back of the head by a machine gun. We have shot by another b- friendly fire, and then we have javelin to death, choked by chains, door poisoning. Steel door poisoning, I guess. Uh, And then, I guess, frozen to death, even though she's revived. Essentially, she's dead here. Uh, So, uh, once again, Megan, you're our guest. Uh, What say you? I think I would have to go with door poisoning, because then I get to have a little little speech. I get my little final words. Yeah, just say your piece. Get to say sorry to everyone that you failed Mm -hmm. utterly and and move on. Maybe wear a beret. (laughs) You're so jaunty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I can just expire. The way everyone wants to go out. All right, Gina, what say you? Well, I am, I am very pro Cronenberg, so uh, I am going to choose to be Javelin to death. <laughs> Makes sense. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as, as Cronenbergian deaths go, it's, it's pretty low key. I mean, you know, I, I could just kind of dissolve like the guy at the end of Videodrome. Mm. Or, or you know, of course, the classic head explode. You know, or I could, you know, mm-hmm. someone, someone could, you know, vomit all over my hand and vaporize it. So this is, you know, a pretty quick and relatively clean way to go. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the javelin. Um, I guess out of all of these, I think I'd like to get bunked through the cryo chamber because then I could wake up in a world where everyone's wearing very smart knits and, and... no underwear. Yep. And no underwear. I mean, underwear talking... has been, you, your dreams have finally come true. Underwear has been outlawed. I finally get the Mormon heaven I was always promised, but <laughs> will not get because I, re- I walked away from religion and took my name off the books. Sorry. Uh, but that's the way it comes down. But, you know, maybe I get it again through Friday the 13th. You know, stranger things have happened. Not, and so... not anybody finding religion through a Friday the 13th movie, I don't think. <laughs> I think that's about the strangest possible thing that could happen. And, <laughs> uh, you know, anything could happen. Uh, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. And so that brings us uh, to a close for this week. But before we go, we want to make sure that uh, everyone can reach out uh, to our guests and hear more about the Megan uh, is there anything you'd like to, to tell people that you do that they can read? Uh, yes. So... As mentioned, I know a lot about V.C. Andrews novels, and I write about them and recap them at trappedintheattic.wordpress.com, my blog in the attic. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at MP Sunday, where I really mostly just also talk about V.C. Andrews. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Worthy subject. 100%. Hashtag all caps Vera. And so, Gina, uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I have a website where I write about uh, pop culture, old television no one cares about, and the sundry other things at uh, GinaRadcliffe.com. And I, too, am on Twitter uh, for the you know, life of me. Sometimes I have no idea why, but it's a uh, it's Porcelain72. Do it today, people. Check it out. If you want to talk to us, there's an easy way to do it. That's on Twitter. It's instant and it's free at Kill by Killpod is the way to 
do it. Uh, I have something longer to say. Um, longer than 280 characters. I can't imagine it, but it's happened in the past. Uh, email us at killbykillpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram, killbykillpodcast. And write and review us on iTunes, people. Uh, we are sort of stuck uh, at a certain place here. We need you to put us over the top. And I know you can do it. Be that person who helps us help everyone else with their Friday the 13th questions. It's easy enough to do. Uh, give us five stars and say what your favorite kill is in the Friday the 13th franchise. If you do, we'll read it here on, our, on the air. That is our solemn promise to you, the Kill by Kill listener. And don't worry, folks. The body count will continue. So until next time, for myself and for Gina and Megan, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Kill by Kills produced by We Write Good and is intended for entertainment purposes only. Friday the 13th is owned by Paramount Pictures. Jason is owned by New Line Cinema. No infringement is intended. Kill by Kill logo was designed by Josh Hollis. Visit him at joshhollis.com. The Kill by Kill theme was created exclusively for us by Revenge Body. Get the whole track and much, much more at revengebodymemphis.bandcamp.com today.